So basically, if you put something like Obama is 100 years old, there will be a community note below saying that Obama is born on X, Y, and Z date, and this is enough accurate info. Wow, you do have a client that literally got an email from TikTok. And there's, there's this one AI influencer, right? She has like 3, 3 million followers. Literally, people pay the AI influencer to uh, sponsor both. There was a freaking UFO congress talking about uh, pilots seeing unidentified aircrafts coming in, zapping left, right, and going back up, which no uh, aircraft can do currently at the moment. <laughs> no more legion from your no. fucking country. Target master. Target master. Okay, be that. Exactly. Target the Andromeda Galaxy. Then when you do, when you do consulting course, it perfectly like resumes. Yeah, bro. That, that could be a future where that. All right, so today we have Brandon from Pocket Creative. Thank you for being here, Brandon. Thanks for having me, bro. How's the journey so far, man? All's good, man. Thanks so for the honor of being here, bro. <laughs> The honor is all mine, bro. It's a pleasure to interview people like you. The pleasure is all mine, bro. <laughs> okay, we gotta, we gotta stop. <laughs> can't, can't <laughs> shit. So when did you start running your agency, man? Tell me a bit more about your agency. When did you start? Why did you start? And how is it going so far? Um, we started this agency in April. April last year? April last year. Initially, we did media buying. Mm. So we pivoted into a short form content marketing agency in September. So actually, next month will be our sort of birthday, wow. quote unquote. Yeah, wow. Since the new offer started. Interesting. Why did you pivot from media buying to short form content? Mm, okay, initially when we did media buying, okay, number one, saturation, but I would like to think that that's bullshit. Mm. But more so, the reason why we did so is because, personally myself, um, I've been a creator myself, I film videos, get a shit ton of hate, all that jazz uh, mm. on social media. Why did you get a shit ton of hate? That's weird. I mean, of, okay. The it comes, is wonderful, man. Yeah, it, it comes to the na nature of the content that I post. Uh -huh. I, I like to post content that is you saw my page so my TikTok it's a lot on finance self-improvement a lot of people hate on this kind of shit why? why do they hate on this kind of shit? yeah why do they hate on this kind of shit? that's a good question man ask the haters bro what would they hate on this kind of shit? what's the worst hate you've gotten? on TikTok I would say people saying like because I, I did post a video recently mm. um, off camera we spoke earlier told you my man my first mentor ever was Iman mm. um, when I posted a video on that it, it blew up I think 25k views and people were saying wow this guy paid for Iman he paid for that scam yeah so they was like wow this guy paid for Iman he probably is it's a scam. I, I think it's, itself, uh, it's just the nature of TikTok uh, right. itself because TikTok you can be anonymous you know, nobody knows you Yeah, um, it's easy to drop a few comments here and there mm. nobody can figure out who you are where you stay it's a anonymous account mm. uh. yeah. the quality is really low man the quality of TikTok. the audience I feel on TikTok. Super low, don't you feel? It's viral, but it attracts a lot of like low bar barrel people. Recently, you, you had a video that did this recently viral, right, on TikTok. I, I had quite a few videos that went viral. I actually love the hate comments. It's a lot of hate, right? A lot of hate mm -hmm. comments. Like, okay, the, the ratio of positive is to negative. Yeah, it's about 90% hate, 10% normal. Ex comments. Exactly. Yeah. 90% hate. Yeah. So, I think the with TikTok, is it takes time now. For audience to for the audience to actually see the value in you, mm. see what you have to offer. After you push that out, you do that for a while. Mm, when people actually see that, oh, you you ask someone that you say you are, then they probably will respect you more. They will give you better comments. They will engage with you. Mm. It takes time. Like if you take a look at some of the, there are some creators that you see out there, like people like Naomi Neo and stuff like that. Of course, they still don't get hit, but they they do have loyal followers mm. and fans. Um, yeah, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I find always the best audience is on YouTube. I always find like the com community engagement. YouTube is like the like the Silicon Valley of the internet. And then I would say the streets are like TikTok. Mm. The streets and then maybe like the mid-income people are on Facebook and Instagram. Mm. I would say the rich Atas people are YouTube. And then the mid-tiered one is like Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. And then the worst, like the streets. I think I'm gonna get so much hate if I clip this out and post it on TikTok. You guys are from the streets. No, but seriously, like I feel like that's that's how I segregate the social media channels. I don't know about threats. I think threats won't be relevant in about twelve to eighteen more months because they are just ripping off Twitter right now. X X dot com. And do you use X? Do you use Twitter? Not that much. Mm. I would say in Singapore, I I don't wanna get cancelled for this, mm. but I'm not sure of the so the audience quality. You know, in the target market. Especially for Singapore. For Twitter? Yeah, for Twitter. Okay. I, I prefer Twitter because, I, I mean, x.com. I prefer x because uh, the audience there has matured over a period of do, time. Do you manage to prospect from there? No. I just use it to uh, do research because all of the reports on Twitter are live. 
and they are from people who are banned, people who are like cancel on other platforms. Mm. But Twitter, because of Elon Musk, allows all of them to be there. So all the information there is uh, not biased. Or there's no political agenda. And then even the ones that they've started this thing called the community notes. Do you know? So basically, if you put something like Obama is under years old, there will be a community note below saying that Obama is born on X, Y, and Z date. And this is inaccurate information. Wow. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's after Elon came in. That's after Elon came in. So he made everything transparent. He made crazy moves. Yeah, like he, he is really trying to innovate on this platform. And I can see his vision working. Because like when I go to Twitter, I trust the sources. And even if the sources are inaccurate, there'll be community notes below. Mm. Yeah, so it's insane. Like you can't just go and use an AI machine or whatever and make a Obama image or even Elon Musk image and then post it and get away with it. You can't. There's community notes. And then the audience there is so much more mature. And X.com, they are planning to do like video streaming they're planning to do everything that uh, YouTube is doing Facebook is doing Instagram is doing and make it into one platform and I think their X Factor is a uh, uh, shout out to Melvin So but their X Factor is basically having like unbiased uh, opinions and voices heard there so I really see the vision working out that's why I'm on Team X not on Team Threads Threads is just copy pasting with watered down versions of Twitter or X yeah, that's interesting. Right. So, so like what you mentioned, they plan to overthrow YouTube or they plan I don't, to I don't, I don't, less Musk, ecosystem. I don't think Elon Musk plans to overthrow anybody. He's just Elon Musk, bro. He's just such an innovative thinker, right? He he doesn't, I don't think he comes from that frame of taking over their competitors. Mm. I think he just comes from that frame of innovating and then the competitors just automatically get out. Oh, Tag Elon Musk in the comments. Yeah, he just, shout out, shout out to Elon Musk. Please come on my podcast. Oh, <laughs> That would be insane, man. I'd love, I'd, I'd love to have Elon Musk. Yeah, but anyways, back to your agency. So, you were a media buyer for what niche? What were you doing at that point? Um, Before before this, I started when I was like 19. Mm. Um, is this a relevant question? Um, How old are you now? I'm turning 22 this year. Nice. So, it's been four years. Mm. It's been four years. And back then, I didn't do media buying per se. Like I helped businesses run ads. I literally, I did it for myself. So, I started from zero some build a baking class then literally found someone to teach the classes um as Iman likes to call it a uh, puppet find someone to teach the class then you just run the ads you know mm. then you can create a business like this uh, but mm. scalability wise I ask you honestly um teaching baking classes do you think it scales very well I don't know if you use skills future or grants I think it can be scalable there are companies I don't know much about this niche yeah, so, um, yeah, definitely for sure. But for, for us, we faced an issue. The, the issue we faced is that, number one, um, because we did, we built this during COVID period. So COVID literally blew the whole business out. Yes, we could have went online. Yes, we could have pivoted. But I was still new then. Uh. So, and personally for me, I feel that with, in Singapore, there are a lot of, like, Bells, Bells Baking Studio, a few um, classes. Really. Yes, we can still compete in a sense of, like, yeah, instead of offering packages, you offer, like, per-class pricing and stuff like that. Mix a um, couple hundreds per-per-class. Mm. Um, I did it, like, okay, but back to the question. So, how did we, how did I start, like, media buying? Mm. So, from there, I, I ran the ads. And the instructor teaches the classes. This is a SkillsFuture bakery class, or? just No, because we just started from scratch. Right. So, it was, like, no SkillsFuture, nothing. Uh, we rented a studio. Okay, uh, how, how to set up a baking class business, okay? We rented a studio. I sourced for the instructor on Facebook ads. Mm. So I looked for an instructor that could sort of play a part and be the person that I need to teach the classes. So the instructor sort of teaches the classes, buys the ingredients, plans out the curriculum as she teaches, and I just run ads to it. Okay. So I literally build the whole business and I pay her um, hourly or a profit sharing. So that's how. Basically, like having your own brick and mortar store, but you just sort of rent the place, I assume. Yeah, I mean, that's you, oftentimes that's how you test the model out, man. You gotta test if there's a market for it. So that's how we all started, like, made what, 10k there. Yeah, in profit, revenue per. Oh, in profit. profit. There, yeah. Wow, that's a lot, man, for a bakery. So, the baking classes. Yeah. So, we, oh, that's crazy. we made, yeah, close to that. I mean, this this all goes to show that, you know, no business model, you can't just be be stuck mm. in, your, in your box. For example, let's say in the past, let's take us 10 years back, if you were to run newspaper um advertise, advertisements, you'll be the king. Because everybody wants to be featured on newspapers. Mm. But let's say, if I were to start a newspaper agency, you think you can take that to 100k a month? No, I don't think so. Uh. I mean, you could, but it would be difficult. Yeah, so, which brings me back, brings me back to my point. Like, we, we, we have to adapt in the times. You see, there's AI right now. If you don't incorporate AI into our business, within five years, we'll be wiped out. 
by resources that are using it. So essentially, this is the takeaway. I understand. Okay. So you pivoted from that bakery model or what was the process like? Um, after that, you made 10k and then what next? What happened? So, okay, like I said, it's literally, it literally wiped out. The whole business sort of like wiped out because um we, we couldn't do classes anymore. Because of COVID. Because of COVID, exactly. Because of COVID, you couldn't do classes. So, uh, okay, now, you, now we're back to my life. Uh. So, we, I, I tested out different stuff. So, you know, crypto scams, crypto games, NFT games, NFT flipping. No, I think I was, how, how to say, how do, I, how do I call it? I was fortunate in a sense because even though these are all side hustles to people, I have met people that have actually made like millions, you know, in fact, hundreds of thousands in each of these. That's why I've like stepped onto it. But I've realized one thing, you know, always whenever I jump hustle, it's like, end day, if I don't see myself in the future of this hustle, like five, it will just be forever a side hustle because I'm not, when I'm doing the business, or oh, okay, let's say NFT flipping, what am I essentially doing? I'm just literally trying to make money online. Uh. Like there isn't any value attached to it. So there's no growth. There is no fulfillment. Mm. Um... It's just making money. Yeah, there, there isn't any ulterior motive. Mm. So tell me about that. You try, you tried a few side hustles, everything got wiped out. Then when did you start doing media buying? Or were you still doing media buying after crypto, NFT, this bakery? Media buying wise, e-commerce stores, I would say. Like, so I've had my fair shares of um, business partners or co-founders mm, turning out to be like a waste of time. Like, because, which I feel is very important. And they um, having a good co-founder or someone that um, have the same vision that you have it's way more important than any business model I think you, you can be you can do the best model in the world but your business partner is shit and they take advantage of you then you, I don't know if you feel, if you feel that mm, interesting so then what happened what happened to you, you told me how we, uh, my question was like mm. you tried a few side hustles then you, you're mentioning your partners mm. then you're doing media buying when did you start to pivot for media to buying content okay so we were doing media buying for a while um, we've realized that we there's no offer because we were super new. We only had one case study, which was literally my baking business. So we didn't stand out. Um, yes, we could have done free. Yes, we could have done this and that. But since we were pretty new, we decided to, why not like we were good at content? Why not we do that instead? So we just do a leap of faith. Like. We scraped all uh, clients' prospect. Just went full on into this. Yeah. How's that like so far? The content agency? Yeah. Um, It's going well. We are at, as of now, 15, 15K. In revenue per month? Yeah, in revenue per month. How many clients is that? 15k. Okay, I, I don't like to um account for like one time, one off payments. So that, that doesn't include that. Lah. But as of client wise, we have six clients. Cool. So you do like a retainer model or like a performance model, or is it a mix? A uh, retainer model. Okay. Mm. Why retainer? Why not performance? Why not performance? Because ours is we do mainly service delivery in a sense of like just just delivery. Mm. There's no performance link to it attached to it. But of course, we're exploring that um in the mix. Mm. So I shall not release that. Sure. Then um, tell me uh, about that. Is it a niche? Do you have a specific niche? Do you just target realtors, financial advisors? What What's your niche? We work with sales professionals and coaches. Mm. Coaches such as the broad overview. I mean, coaches we are, we are still trying to explore, trying to like test our our space. But it's more so as long as you're a coach, you do a high ticket service, we can help you. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. And right now, all of your clients, are they from a specific niche or are they all over the place? Uh, right now, all most are real estate agents, I would okay. say. Yeah. Why real estate? A lot of real estate agents are getting into shop home content. Mm. If it is, I think, yeah. I don't know if you see Marcus Lua, but there are a lot of pioneers into it. And a lot of them are realizing that it's a blue ocean uh, compared to just competing on cost per leads on Facebook. So that'll be my answer. Mm. You see yourself serving the real estate niche for the next one, two, three, four, five years. Who knows, man? I mean, like what I said, as we adapt, as consumers adapt, they get smarter. Mm. Um, it's always about understanding market size, understanding supply and demand. Mm. Um, to see where who can better add value to. Like. And end of the day, it's not so much about what you have to offer. Interesting. How did you get your first content client? Share with us that journey. Okay, so in, initially what we did was we literally, I think in order to get your first client, you really have to be, so understand, like, understand your values, you don't have anything, you got to offer either free or something just to cover your cost. Hmm. That, that's the way how all agencies start. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, you probably don't charge like a 10k plus performance at the yeah. get-go when you don't have any case study. So that's what we did. Um, we, we started off with a low fee just to cover our videographers, just to ensure, just to see if there's a model there, you know. The kind of clientele that we are that we are sort of targeting are they even proven? You know, um, is there a market for that? 
And turns out after we did it for a while, we realized, okay, shit, um, we actually do have people that are interested in this and they see value in what we're offering. Uh. That's where we slowly start to we, we, at the start, we did sort of like video production. Not we say video production, but we we did a lot of like new sales letter at new sales letter, YouTube, uh, at at videos, uh, VSLs. But then we, we move into so you ran YouTube ads to get clients, is it? No, no. I see. We help clients uh, do make their YouTube. Ads. Yeah, make okay. those YouTube ads. Okay. Yeah. So how did you get your first client? Tell me about that. Your first content client. First content client. Yeah. We we went we ran an ad that literally says like uh mon- double money back guarantee. Like not satisfied in like. A, Double super, money, the offer was double money. Double money back guarantee and a super low fee. Okay. Like, like cheaper than anybody. What was the low fee? So that was like seven hundred dollars for a two three minute long form video with studio. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So with studio editing everything literally scripting scripting yes okay yeah and you ran that as Facebook ads you ran that as Facebook ads yeah okay we did at the start um because we back then it was experimental yeah. Experimental. Was it a lead form or was it like a funnel page? Well, we're getting into the yeah. the funnel details here. Technical, yeah. The lead form, was a lead form. Oh, nice. Yeah. Simple. I mean, and they, a lot of people like to, they say, well, there's this thing, you try out this, this new funnel, that funnel, but and they, if it works, it works. Like, if the funnel works, it works. It's all about optimizing. Like that, mm. the day. And how many leads did you get from that ad and uh, how many calls did you have to do before you close that? Before I close the first client, that one seven hundred dollar client. It's quite. It was quite easy. Eh? I mean, really, honestly, honestly, because the, the offer sells. At the end of the day, I think if you have been watching Alex Muzi, you know that end day is all about the offer. No matter how good you are as a salesperson, that's why you you're doing what you're doing right now, man. Mm. Offer creation and helping your clients close. If end day the offer isn't a good offer, then no matter how good of a salesman you are, it's like selling ice to Eskimo. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So how how many calls did you go on before you closed that one free client? I how, that one that first client. How many calls did I have? Or how many leads did you have to contact? Just just to have a more descriptive visual in my head. Can't really remember. Like, honestly, honestly. Right. Uh, how much did you spend on? How much did we spend on ads yeah, for that one client? It was quite fast actually. I think fifty hundred. But don't quote me for this. I might be wrong. Yeah, fifty hundred, fifty to a hundred dollars. Hundred dollars before we, because back then, uh, to be honest, also I wasn't a very good closer salesperson. Because all I did was literally follow a format of like closing. I closed on phone for the baking classes. Mm. Literally follow a text script. Yeah, just just close on phone. And then the calling was a lot different. I mean, I I started learning from sales side. Is this part of your content? Do you share this? Yeah, sales? Sure, of course. So okay, initially, um, I started learning sales from Grand Cardone. Uh-huh. So it was a lot of like very pushy tactics and everything. Wow, I, I tell you, I had one very legend call, bro. Uh, the, the prospect said to me, I don't like to work with very aggressive uh, sales like business owners. We, we just ended. I was like, why do you think I, uh, why do you think I'm aggressive? Why, why do you think this offer will work for you? It's literally like, it's not, it's less of like being an, an expert la, and qualifying them. It's more so like forcing the idea on them that hey, this is good for you. Yeah, so that was what I did at the start. So you so followed Grant Cardone's advice and it didn't work? Um, you can say that not really his advice because I didn't pay for his programs and stuff. I just watched his videos, um, his YouTube videos, mm. and that's what he he go about advocating for. Apparently, it didn't really work for me, but perhaps it's different. I don't want to quote anything. Mm. So, what worked for you then? What worked for me? Jeremy Lee Minor. Ah, you have you heard of him? Yeah, of course. I love his stuff. Yeah, I I, I like the way he uh, approached sales, um, closings, and everything. Um, not just him. I mean, that's it's not one one off thing. It's constantly learning. I would say. I think the best, like what Alex Modi, I recently watched a video from Alex Modi, he said there is one thing, you can get 50,000 sales mentors, pay over five figures on sales consulting. But if you don't even go for a sales call, what makes you think that, that 50,000, 100,000 spent on sales coaching is going to end day is about taking action. Literally the difference between an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur is someone that just takes action. If you take action, you are 1%, 0.01%. Literally, that's true. That's true. Do you, would you wouldn't you agree? Yeah, of course I agree. Like it's it's that simple. Eh? You think about it. Just take action, and literally. Okay, I mean I'm not telling you to just like sell bait or you know sell secrets, import secrets in Singapore and stuff like that. But if you feel that your model works, of course test it out. If it don't work, change. But if you keep keep at it. You keep testing. You change. You keep testing. You change, and you find something that works, and you stick through it. And not because you know a lot of people they they, they have this one they have this one um mindset. Okay, for example, like, so I managed to make my first 10k from this thing. Mm. Since I already completed this really, why not I test another thing? Because I really, I'm, I'm really a king of this really, ma. I made 10k, which, 
uh, 20, 22 years old, reach 23 years old, meet maybe 10, okay, let's not say 10, let's say 100k from this. I feel like I conquered SMMA. Why not I test YouTube automation? Why not I test e-commerce? Why not I test what other nonsense I have? Yeah, there's so many, man. Yeah. So, Forex and B, I don't know. Yeah. Property shipping, there's so many. There's so many. You no, know, the end day is about, honestly, really, really just sticking to your guns. If you feel that, I mean, at the start, of course, it's good to test different houses out. Definitely, like, I know a lot of people say, just stick to one at the start and just do it. But at the start, if you're just testing out, you really don't know what suits, suits your personality, you know, your vision. Some people want to build the best e-commerce store. Some people don't really like to socialize. Maybe e-commerce is better for you. Maybe, if let's say you like to communicate with people, you like to um, see your clients win faster, then you do SME. Or if let's say you, you are nerd, you like media, you like editing, then you do YouTube automation. You, you just, you clip and you take videos. And then you let you let YouTube pay you. Mm. Uh, whatever it is, find what you like mm. doing. Literally, true. The ocean is out there, man. True, man. So you got that first client. Uh, was it a real estate client? First, can we talk about that seven hundred dollar client that you first got with the two to three minute VSL? Remember? Okay, actually, okay. To be really honest, uh, my memory isn't the best. No, like literally, literally things move so fast for us that I think I don't know. I don't know how do you how do you like describe this because a lot of people what they like to do is they like to test the science out. They like to go part time on it, do their. Uh, to do their business. I am not, I'm not advocate for that. Like, I feel all in on nothing. Mm. That's me. So I literally went all in on, on that. So every single day we are doing, we are doing different things. We are doing so many things that I don't really remember what happens in the last month. It's more so in the moment doing, executing, getting shit done uh, instead of. But, back to the question. Uh, you got your first client, right? A $700 client. Was it a real estate client? Is it a real estate client? I believe so. Is it a real estate client or a social media marketing agency okay. or SM or a SMB? Either one, either one. And then how did you get your second client, third client? How did you snowball from there to where you are right now at 15? Um, I think because we have case studies. Ma. After you do one, you get testimonials, you get case studies. And then from there, you it's easy to sell, I would say. Easy to sell because you have case studies to show for. Yeah. Because, yeah, like you said, the biggest problem I find is people keep saying they get, they run a 10k per month SMM agency. Actually, it's not. They just get 10k for that month and the next month is zero. That's not MR. Yeah. Not, that's not that's MR, yeah, yeah. Monthly recurring revenue, right? The, but a lot of people like to say that. So, so my question is, so how did you snowball it from the $700 to, I don't know, whatever? But being monthly, is it? Yeah. How did you get that? Because that sounds like a one-up project and then I'm I'm assuming you had to go back and run ads again or was it referrals? How did it work for you guys? Yeah, initially what we did was we run like YouTube ads, mom. Correct. So YouTube ads is very hard to charge sort of a subscription fee to that. Um, I mean, yes, you, you definitely need a lot of new uh, campaigns, new graphics, every new, new videos every single month um, to test your, your YouTube uh, your YouTube campaigns and your Facebook campaigns, etc, etc. Yeah, but then again, um, you don't need them every month. Ideally, if the campaign is good, you can still run the video. I don't for yourself. Can you run it for at least two months? So ideally, we have to we will only be paid seven hundred dollars every two months. Wouldn't really make sense. Um, bottom line wise, profit wise. So what we did was we pivoted Uh, really niche down. Like what I think recently I saw one of your podcasts with Gabriel Wong. Like I literally resonate with what he said. Niche all the way down, then slowly climb back up. That's a that's the way to go, lah. That's the not the way to go. That's the only way to go. Yeah, same I mean. I agree. Yeah. I think like what you, you do, you coach gyms. Yeah. So, yeah. I delete that. Uh, niche all the way down. Um, do short form. Help a, a specific uh, industry. So, for example, let's say, so because this is to help your viewers, right? So, let's say, um, if you're doing media buying or you're running whatever SMA you're doing, let's say, perhaps you're doing social media management. How do you stand out? Is maybe you can just do Posters only be the best at posters, be the best at reels per se. Okay? Then you only look, reach out to a specific type of audience. It's really just this. So you can say you are the expert because you are not, I'm not a social media market uh, management or social media marketer. I am a social media marketer only for um, SMEs and I only do reels. If you like the other stuff, I can refer you to people. But if you like what I have to offer and you know that my reels and my expertise on this specific niche can give you XYZ outcome, then work with me. Interesting. So that's how you got your second client. I still don't have the answer. How I got my second client? Yeah. With the first client's uh, testimonials. Okay. Was it through an ad, the second client, or was it a referral? Or, or, or through it. Mm. So everything you get right now, or all the almost most of the clients that you have right now, is it through ads or is there a mixture? What's the percentage like? Okay, so at the start, um, yeah, through ads because... We had a brand, they had a name and everything. So from there, more so, we pivoted in the short form because we realized that actually with short form, 
you can get inquiries, you can get organic DMs, you can get people inquire with you without paying a single cent on ads. So we pivoted into really studying about that shit. Literally for th- two, two, three months, I am a salesman, I'm a closer, but I'm not even doing any sales because we are working to make the product better, give more results to our client. I think there's a very underrated thing that a lot of um, business owners, entrepreneurs, they don't do. They want to think about how they can build their bottom line or their profit to as high as possible, but then they don't think about how to make their product better um, so that they can, let's say I, I make 30k MR in this, I can just jump to second thing, I like jump to the third thing, you know, fourth thing, but they don't make their product the best. So people don't stay. The MRR is literally, what, two months? The next, you lose that within the third month. Mm. What's the point? So I mean, I mean it for a long game, the longevity. That's why I pivoted. We, we studied, um, learn more about content marketing, learn more about how actually, you, how do people actually, you know, generate leads from this. Um, good. We started with, okay, yes, I did content before. Yes, I did um, in the past. A lot of, I, I do receive DMs from my account. Some are good, some are are, are great. So, because I did a Mango series recently, we are side-tra- side-tracking, but, okay. Yeah, tell me about that. Yeah, so, okay, the Mango thing. I, I did the Mango series for a while. There were people even inquiring and say, hey, I watched your video. I actually did Mango. Um, it's, it was awesome. Literally, there are people like that. And so these are the intangible sort of like outcomes. They you didn't expect, because when you create content, you do this, you, you always expect to get a... ROI. So it's the ROI game. Uh, what, what, what kind of ROI can I receive from this? Do I get 30 leads this next month? Of course, you are thinking that, but an intrinsic sort of reward from this is you get people saying, um, I appreciate you because I've learned your stuff, your free stuff, and I've actually got X amount better. This kind of thing is is really different. Mm. I mean, I bet you, you do you do podcast yourself, you do receive, you might receive um, comments like this, people saying, well, you, because of this thing that you share, well, I learned so much from you. Yeah. I'm actually surprised people watch my podcast all the way, you know. There are people who watch from the start till the end and then they message me they've been watching every single video or something. What, what, what did they say? They're like, yeah, they learn a lot. I'm like, huh? You watch my podcast? Exactly. I'm surprised. Like, this this, this exact feeling, no money can buy. Yeah. Am I right to say? Yeah. Like, literally, it's like, if you're inspiring someone on the internet, it's, you know, you know, there's this Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Mm. It's literally self-actualization. Yeah. Literally, you... You're inspiring people, you know, you are... Mm. It, it keeps you moving forward. La. It keeps you moving forward, I'll say. Mm. Even though it's not uh, an ROI generating activity yeah. per se, I'm not... I don't think this will directly give you clients. Indirectly, maybe yes, because um, you get credibility, you branding, etc, etc. Yeah. But directly, that isn't a direct KPI. But the fact that you're doing this, inspiring people... Yeah, people, people appreciate that. They learn a lot. Yeah. But then how do you counter that with people who want to make money? With content, because there's businesses that need to make money. You have to pay rent. How do you use content as a gateway? Like you were mentioning, you get them inquiries, leads. How does it work? What have you learned so far? Okay, so this is our system. Um, You want to figure out, find out more, you can check my YouTube. But the whole strategy that we do here is literally very different. When people share con- content, you see people, there are a lot of kinds of content out there. Like you see UGC, YouTube, podcasts, um, recordings, uh, Spotify. A lot of structures, a lot of variations of content. But the whole method we, we, we do content is really very different. So instead of sharing uh, what, the where, the when, we only share the how. Meaning to say, like, we'll figure out, let's say, for example, you are my client, um, you run a media buying agency, right? what kind of problems are you trying to solve for people? Then we'll literally take those pain points and problems to make as a video. Meaning to say, we'll give before receiving anything. So for example, let's say you, um, people don't know you, but you, you teach people how to do media buying. So you literally, you, you remove from yourself from being an information, infomercial, uh, because we don't sell information products. You sell a service, sell media buying map. So you literally teach them information. You teach and you give away the information and you sell the implementation. Yeah. It's a, it's a different concept. I don't think a lot of people um, are aware of this. But the ability to just do that and give everything out in the front end and so that you literally give everything that is free that you literally can give. And then there's free and then any a feed that can that can allow people to take one step forward with it. Meaning to say, uh, what is what isn't actionable is for example stuff like okay, let me use a property example, because I'm very good with that. For example, let's say we are at a show flat right now. Oh hey, look at these five, six, seven, eight features of this show flat. I can literally Google that if I want to look for a condo or I want to look for HDB. So instead of showing um this show flat, for example, that show flat, what you can do is tell them, okay, let's say you want to buy a condo, uh what are the loans you need to take? What the, what, what the, let's say the tenant or what, what the seller might 
say to you what they will not tell you, what they will hide from you, so that you are aware. So they li- you literally give everything away in your in your arsenal. For example, if you are media buying a uh, company, you teach people why you shouldn't run SEO, why how to run Facebook ads. So when people see, whoa, shit, then this this guy Simon knows so many things about Facebook ads. I better engage him because he is so credible. He's he literally gives everything for free. Um, I know that he knows his shit because I seen results from him from his case study. From his videos, he shows he's credible, he's smart. Why not just work with Simon instead of doing it myself? Yes, the, the kind of the kind of perception your social media must give is when I scale a social media page, correct? I must be able to execute whatever you teach on my own and still see success. But I want to work with you because I know that you have systems, you have SOPs, you have processes in place such that if I do it with you, you can expedite my process. So you're selling, you are selling time, you're selling systems, systems thinking, you're selling processes that your business has. Yeah. But how does that lead to sales for them? Has your client been making money after working with you for... Okay, so we are, we are in literally the lead generation space in a sense. We create, we generate a lot of inquiries and leads uh, from for them in a sense. So we don't, do not do any sales coaching for now. So yes, they do. We, we have clients that manage to get 100, 100 plus leads within just like two, three videos. So they make leads, uh, they, they make videos literally on TikTok. Even though you, you mentioned we were speaking that all this were untapped the audience were sort of unqualified. But the real ones will come to DMU. So that's what we realized. The real ones will actually come to find your Instagram page. They, they see your TikTok. And TikTok has this icon, this Instagram icon, right? They, will, they literally will go to your IG, they will DM you, and they will ask you for help. Mm. Uh, whatever shape or form. Do you have any case studies to share uh, of any clients making a lot of money from content so far? Um, So far... Content-wise, I don't know if it's a problem with closing or whatsoever. We we do have we do have a client that literally got an email from TikTok. Literally, you have ne- have not have never heard of it before. Like I've never heard of it before. So I don't think anybody. I don't think like literally it's normal. Nobody gets an email from TikTok. I've not yet. So it's quite shocking. But she got an email from TikTok from literally TikTok of asking asking her like exactly um can you make a video on this. What do you think about this? Perhaps it's an issue with the follow-up. I'm not too sure. So we are also exploring into that uh, potential ways to also bring in appointment setters. You know what I mean? Uh, so that we can push into more performance. If we are able to help them set these appointments instead of losing them away. The real difference between organic leads versus let's say you run ads or lead, lead forms, right? Lead forms, we still get a number. So you can keep spamming them. You can keep like calling them. You can keep following up. But once, let's say, uh, organic lead blocks you, right? That's it, bro. That's literally like you, you can't contact them, you don't have their details, especially if they're on TikTok. You, you can't message them, they won't read your messages. So, the, the it requires a different art, yeah, I would say, or okay. conversing with this kind of people. Okay, so any revenue from your clients doing content like high ticket revenue? Have they sold any condos from directly from the content you've created? Okay, right now, as of our agents, yes, our agents have not, they have only generated leads. So they are either on follow up basis, all from etc. Yes. Or we have this. We have one. Uh, we have a coach that has been selling consulting services. So he he's, he sold a few um consulting services from TikTok organic. But we are of course we are we are exploring um ways to optimize. I think it's always about doing that like ways to optimize um bring the campaigns faster. Mm. Um. Yeah. I think with regards to your question, initially we. We focus a lot on just creating short form videos and just creating videos that will get engagements. So it's more so now we are, like I said, we are we're still in the midst of toggling. We are not perfect yet. Once we finalize the offer and we realize, okay, shit, this is it. They will stick through it and yeah. Mm. We hope to see um, more success. Interesting. So what's next for you? Are you using, are you planning to use AI or are you, are you already using AI in your workflow? Okay, initially a lot of people, they, they think that Creating a short form agency is very easy, man. Just AI, AI this, AI that. Mm, there's CapCut. There's okay. Yeah, there's CapCut, there's AI. But after doing this for a while, we realized it's very, as, a, as of yet, la, we've tried a lot of things like prompt creators, you know, from a lot of like AI rules, but they don't they don't quite capture the the gist of what we want. So we, of course, we're still trying to implement more AI, especially into operations, um, into delivery, into sales, etc., etc. Okay. You have, maybe you have some to suggest? Yeah, I mean, I've used quite a bit of AI so far. But it's not perfect. That's the problem. Mm. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of nuances. Like, sometimes the captions are wrong. Sometimes this is wrong and it's very irritating. So, I just use humans instead for now. Humans leveraging on AI. So, I, I teach my editors how to use AI. And then after that, just from there. That's that's what I've been using. But then that costs you more time and more software costs. So, just let the human do it all together. So, how do you get them to do it? For AI? Yeah. How do you get them to use AI? Mm, CapCut 
CapCut has the auto the caption. Auto captions, yeah. Um, I think there's a few other softwares. Uh, then as well for audio, do you use Adobe Podcasts and Hunt? Mm. Yeah. So sometimes Adobe this Podcast. this uh audio gets like like fuzzy. This just use that to fix the audio immediately instead of going to uh Adobe Audition, which is like a longer process. This one just takes ten minutes if you plug the audio in. That's one. Mm, so far, not so much. I mean, I'm trying to integrate. Actually, why don't you integrate AI into your into your clients' uh, Instagram and TikTok? Connect it to OpenAI, and then there's a way to get them to reply automatically. With AI, yeah, that's yeah. one way to do that. As well. So we are testing like um to say AI is like like many chat, how many chat? Yeah, but that you can actually just use OpenAI directly. Seriously, yeah. integrate into the social media. Yeah, you can you can integrate it directly. Yeah. Interesting. This is GPT four, isn't it? Uh, with three point five or four both three point yeah. five. They have the API, the oh, open API. source, so you can okay. connect it. Yeah, so that's one way. Also, that, that you from there you sort of like set appointments with the AI. Mm, like you just say DM me grow or whatever DM me mm. dollar sign, and then the AI will take over and be like, hi, this is this is Brandon AI. I'm here to find out a bit more about you, and if it's good, I'll send you the link. Something like that. Interesting. Apparently, that's AI. So I'm trying to explore that as well. But I think ultimately, yeah. it's just you. Way by offer? Uh, no offer yet. Just trying to use that for appointment setting. Trying to use that in my own workflow before I sell it to anyone. Mm. Yeah. Anyways, it's it's literally changing almost every week, man. AI. Like back then, GPT four was the shit, and then there's a few other competitors coming up. Google's but I tell you, there's so many. Every yeah. week it changes. If GPT just takes a break uh, for a month, uh, that's it, man. Yeah, they're gonna get dusted by yeah. the competitors. Crazy, yeah. It's really crazy. It's super fast, man. Like that goes to show, like you know, you know. Okay, I don't know. I know this is gonna be a very controversial topic, but a lot of people, you know, when they graduate uni, la, mm. they expect. What do you expect to like, graduate uni? Like a typical, uh, no. You think that you about paying job? Yeah, you you think that you really are the shit. Really, you computer school. You you dim, you you think that you you want to get this pay, and you're just you're just gonna be good with it. Do you think, like, let's say right now, if I go to a three year uni, I come out. Honestly, do you think that there are many jobs available for you? Yeah, I don't so going. In today's market, it's impossible. And like, literally, it's more profitable and it makes more sense for you to run a business than work for a business. Yeah. Scary, man. The cherry times that we are in. Yeah. I mean, there are traditional jobs like uh, surgeons, yeah, lawyers. Course. There's a few jobs. Actually, yeah. there are still backbone pillars of society that you need to go to uni for, regardless of what AI does. I don't know whether they will allow AI into like laws and politics. Maybe that will happen in the future. Because like Lee Kuan Yew, you know, our our founding father of, of the country, Lee Kuan Yew, he's very strict with his requirements, right? Death sentence if you mm. use drugs. Mm. Um, no nonsense policy when it comes to crime, etc. Like 50 years, we've been, we've been where we are. I think Singapore could be one of those countries mm. that could <laughs> appoint an AI prime minister in the future. Because the AI will never make a mistake. The AI will be, mm. uh, will be, you know, will never be biased. Mm. And the AI will be strict. Like, exactly like what Lee Kuan Yew was. Maybe even better. Are you aware of this AI influencer? This girl? No. I, I mean, I know in Japan they have. No, I, there, I okay, there's, there's this one AI influencer, right? She has like 3, three million followers. Literally, people pay the AI influencer to uh, sponsor posts. Huh? Really? So, literally, there's an influencer really um, that is doing that. What's it called? I'm not sure that the name you can go and Google it. It's just such an AI influencer, you probably can find it. It's just this lady, right? So she usually just posts about herself and she's an AI literally. And then she does sponsor both and there's like comments and everything. Eh. It's insane. Eh. She, it's, the account is literally making money just off her posts. Imagine just running five of those Instagram pages. Actually, there's this one thing that I would like to ask you. There's one thing that Elon Musk said, I think a while back. He said in future, right, there'll be a, a basic global income, a basic global. Uh, sort of like fixed pay. How do you call it? Like a, yeah, like communism. Uh, yeah, yeah. Everybody, yeah, everybody will get basic pay. The only those creative thinkers, uh, they will just get mad low money because there's no need for people anymore. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's gonna happen. Uh, that's basically communism, bro. <laughs> <laughs> In a sense, lah. But that's North Korea, right? They, they will still get. I think. I think what he was saying is, they, they they will still get like their own freedom of speech and stuff like that. But it's just there's no need for these people. Yeah, they just get a base, like a base. No, not a base base. I, I don't want to call it a base. It's like a living expenses income. Like a $500 per month just to eat and do nothing. Because he said, yeah, I will take over. So there's really no need for these people. Yeah, well, they have that in Europe already. Like if you are unemployed, you get unemployment benefits in a lot of countries. And their tax is quite high. I don't think it will happen in countries like Singapore. Mm. Where it's a capitalist, profitable, profitable uh, culture. 
But um, yeah, I think it'll happen. And uh, you know about the types of civilizations, it's type 0 to type 7. I'm not aware about that spectrum. So we are currently a type 0 civilization trying to be type 1. Mm. And it's all about energy consumption, how we use the resources in that planet and consume it and make it work for us. So we're trying to go to type 1. And I think type 2 is like you can travel from planet to planet. Type 3 is from uh. galaxies to galaxies. Uh, so we are trying to go to type 1. So I think we will have that happen in probably our lifetime or maybe in our children's lifetime where we can do interplanetary travels and then type 2, type 3, type 4, type 5, 6 and 7 apparently like those are like you can use the Crazy yeah shit, you can you can utilize the entire solar system like the monthly version yeah fucking no it's 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 it's, it's, it's crazy you can like utilize suns you can create suns so that's that's a concept that we are we have already like scientifically I forgot it's if it's one of the scientists uh, well, this is gonna be kicked into a short form view yeah, <laughs> this has to be. You must take Elon Musk and talk about the seven layers. Yeah, like the t- seven types of civilization. So I think AI will help in that, anyways, regardless of pay or what. And then, like, uh, if you have done your conspiracy theory research on aliens visiting us, Egyptian pyramids, all the wonders of the world, they say that we have had some type of intervention. If you look at um scriptures, religious scriptures, uh, <laughs> there's a what's that channel called? Uh? The one that has the memes everywhere. But anyways, they have a lot of UFO documentaries They talk about how like if you replace angels with aliens, uh, ladders with uh, UFO beams. And recently there was a UFO uh, congress. You saw that? In the US? Is it? Oh, I don't, the U- I don't keep up on the news. That was a, there was a freaking UFO congress talking about uh, pilots seeing unidentified aircraft <laughs> coming in, zapping left, right and going back up, which no uh, aircraft can do currently at the moment. And these sightings have been happening since the 1990s. So either the government is hiding from us or there's aliens. Or it's a type 2, type 3 civilization like I men- mentioned, which is also still alien to us. So I think AI will help us get there faster. Whether we are the aliens in the future coming visiting us or not, I think we will get there faster with AI. So I don't know about the pay. I don't know whether even the concept of money will work in the future. It could be uh, an outdated system, you know what I mean? And we could just be on one mission. There, there, there won't be any more... Cause Guru selling SMA calls. <laughs> no more forces, man. No more Elon Gatris, man. It's going to be... Like, Elon Musk will be probably the first yeah. and then there'll be billions of Elon Musk in the future where we're all trying to be from type 1 to type 2, type 2 to type 3. I don't know what humans will be like in the future. Now, now that you speak on this, we are, we are swaying a, a, a lot away from... But it's quite interesting to learn these kind of topics. But just thinking about it, even saying Elon Musk managed to do this, he literally wiped everyone out. Like, Zuckerberg, all that. Literally, it would just be Elon Musk because what he's doing, like, let's say if he managed to do this interplanetary travel, everything will become literally irrelevant. We want to learn about, let's say in school, we want to learn about interplanetary travel or we want to learn about how Facebook will potentially uh, yeah. give you ad budget, how yeah. you manage ad budget and yeah. grow a SMME. Yeah. No, you want to learn, like, your job, bro. <laughs> People, people's future job will be not doctors and lawyers anymore. I want to be a planet traveler. Yeah. Wow. I want to colonize the next Mars. And then you're paid like Brandon Un conquered Mars. I want to yeah, yeah, exactly. now. And then, like, I'll quit SMMA for that shit, bro. <laughs> quit SMMA and be a <laughs> fucking. I say, don't do that shit. Like, yeah, exactly. say, I, if I, I'm, I'm paid, let's say, like 500 per month uh, to plan that travel, right? Yeah. Come on, man. I, I just start a podcast, planetary travel podcast, dude. Yeah. That's it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Interplanetary. <laughs> no more legion from your yeah. fucking country. You legion. No more target. Like, target. Target audience, you target the market. Target, target, market. target, market. target, market. target, market. target market. Exactly. Target the Andromeda Galaxy. Then when you do, when you do consulting course, it perfect, like then, the resumes. Yeah, bro. That that could be the future, man. That, bro, it sounds so weird. <laughs> how I see that out loud. In terms of planetary zooms. <laughs> yeah, that'd be crazy, man. I mean, if you watch uh, Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy, mm-hmm. do you watch the new Christmas special one? No. But anyways, uh, long story short, in that clip, um, they kidnapped Kevin Bacon, which is one of the singer actors from Planet Earth, to go and meet uh, Star Lord. Right, Peter Quill. And then the wife calls, where the hell are you? And then uh, Kevin Bacon, he's from Earth, right? He's in, he's in Groot and uh, Peter Quill is like, how do I get reception here? He said, oh, this spaceship, anything within 400 light years can get reception. He's like, what the? And he answered the wife. He said, I'll be, I'll be back soon. And then I was looking at the cape. I was like, hmm, I think that could be realistic someday in the future, you know? I mean, I don't know about 400 light years, but interplanetary, like we're saying. Actually, we never know. That's the thing. That's the thing. Like, like back to the why thing, like I said again. You see, like, you see YouTube automation and so many stars. Like, imagine, let's say, if you're Elon Musk, you wake up every single day to, to even, like, fathom the idea of creating this shit so you can help millions, millions, trillions of people, mm. like, in the future. You're not even just, like, what Elon Musk is doing. He's not just, he's not just doing this for um 2023 Elon Musk. He's doing this for 
Elon Musk's um, sons. He's doing for humanity. Humanity, exactly. And life. Exactly. He's doing this for, just to prove, like, just to prove, like, something. There's some proof. There's this thing he always says. He says, wouldn't it be sad if we are alone in the universe and we didn't even learn how to travel galaxies and planets? And, yeah, that struck me. I was like, yeah, that would be very sad. That's so crazy, man. He should, he should have sold away Tesla and all his other shit just to, but then again, Never- no, but he's still doing well. Like regardless, yeah. like every company he touches accelerates at such a speed because of the person he is. That's why I'm on Team X instead of Team Threats. I actually made a <laughs> Instagram story of me uninstalling Threats. I don't so like that platform. Like I used it the first day and I just went in with the objective of, okay, let's see if this is appealing to me. Like, Cause I really don't have so many social media platforms on my phone. So distracting. I was like, okay, my followers got imported onto my phone from my Instagram to my threads, like maybe 20%, right? I don't know. But then why would they consume my content there when they can just consume your Instagram? I can literally write the same caption on my Instagram. And if I want to make a longer post, I just make a YouTube video. I, I didn't get the point of threads. Mm. And threads is the same censorship as Facebook and Instagram. So there was no X factor. Literally X was better. Mm. So I just uninstalled it. I was like, ah, not worth it for me. You mentioned getting distracted right? with many social media platforms. Too many. How are you coping with it? I just off notifications for the past two years. It's been the best decision of my life. Off notification. Yeah, actually my WhatsApp is also off. Uh, so I don't even check the WhatsApp. I see, I see. <laughs> then, yeah. Don't, don't you don't you like go on Instagram often? We, yeah. we have the habit, you know. Yeah. Like when we are bought, come in, press the red color square, mm. the, the pink color square, Instagram. Just start scrolling for hours. They literally they even know we are scrolling. Yeah, correct, correct. So it, that's a battle, uh, but uh, I think turning off notifications helps a lot. So uh, all my platforms notification is off and I generally try to plan the week on my calendar only. So the only thing that I plan is on my Google calendar. Like this mm-hmm. podcast was planned. Prospect meeting is planned. Client meeting is planned. Everything else, I'm okay free-flowing. In fact, I'm okay using six hours of Instagram, which is not healthy, but it's okay for me because I, when I have the work scheduled out, I just really work and the notifications don't get to me. But when I do go into the platform, I do overconsume sometimes. But it's okay. It's not that bad. Like, most people are not productive. That's the main problem. It's not that they are consuming. Yeah, you can consume six hours of Instagram and actually get a shit ton of idea. Sometimes I just learn a lot. Just by... I mean, it's not the healthiest way to learn. But I do learn a lot. I, like, see new trends and stuff. And that's how I discovered, like, Go High Level last year, mm-hmm. which is catching on into Singapore right now and a few other platforms. So you still learn a lot from scrolling. And it depends on the field also. Like, are you following junk or are you following a lot of entrepreneurs? And then if you're following entrepreneurs, are you implementing? So that's another conversation. But I'm okay with it. It's not that bad, but it is bad on certain days. Then with regards to implementation, what you can do is can literally scroll and have a notepad inside you. Yeah, I was going to mention that. Yeah, so if you want to scroll, just literally pull up a notepad. Lah. So at least even though you are yeah. like you're on rest, on break, you are still learning something. Yeah, win-win. Actually, that's a great tip. Yeah. Like I have a storyboard um, notepad so every time I like an idea uh, no I just on my notes app oh, notes. So I just open and quickly write down and then I go back to scrolling Yeah. then I just feed that whole thing into chat GPT to make a proper video idea mm-hmm. Yeah. so I've got like 20-30 fun ideas right now to test yeah. for podcast or for my own content just talking head videos talking head so you bring talking head yeah but I'll finish my podcast first because I want to focus first on one, one singular um, method of uh, video content creation mm, I see yeah. move do one first then move on to the next then see what works what's the plan with short form short form uh, talking head content positive is it yeah so my, my idea is the same as Alex Ramon just creating long form YouTube videos keeping it up for short form on other platforms yeah mm. I don't really want to make like short, short, short form videos. Maybe I'll make a long form like Hamza. You watch Hamza? Occasionally. Yeah, like Hamza kind of videos or Iman, even Iman Gazi kind of videos. Mm. Actually, Iman Gazi, I think it's all long form. He just clips it up and puts it online. Yeah, I think that's more sustainable for me personally. It is sustainable, sustainable la, but the biggest problem that we face with, no, we, not really we face, we, we studied this before. And the biggest problem with doing this is because you, you take long forms and you just clip it up. You don't have like miniature hooks. It's very hard. Mm. Some, some videos will just be flops. You can use Opus clip, you know, and just clip a long form video in, mm-hmm. in the short form. But if the videos are just okay, just it doesn't have an agenda, doesn't have a focus, mm. then there's there's not much there's not much growth. So this I this I, this I mentioned really, like like that's why you, you got in one to even teach you about YouTube. It's, it's very different. Like to be successful on YouTube and on IG, TikTok, it's very different. Mm. That's what I can say. True, true. Yeah, maybe I'll just try short form in the future. Yeah. I was I would suggest the 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 ideal right. Which is insane. Only Alex Mozi can do this kind of shit. But the ideal sort of balance you can you should do will be podcasts, podcasters, 
maybe one batch of podcast, one batch of long form YouTube videos, and then talking hit. So literally you just do this three. Then you get teams, a whole team to win. Mm. Do this whole thing up for you. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so like podcast, long form, like tutorial videos. Okay, so podcast is to create communication, create relationships. So it shows that you got people with you, you, you mm. your social proof. Um, Everything is, is laid out for, mm. for a reason. So social proof and all that. Like, mm. You show that you're knowledgeable. A like very natural style, ma, like talking to you, then you just clip, clip here, clip there. Mm. Let's podcast. Talking head is more so to talk about your service, um, share about. Like literally, it's more selling, la, you know. It's more, it's more selling and more focused. Um, YouTube is more okay. After you get these two, is usually where you you gain traffic, right? Podcast and TikTok. That's where you literally funnel into your YouTube, right? which is where you want people to get eventually get into. Like you mentioned, longevity. I agree as well. YouTube is the best for longevity, but if you don't have traffic. You, you can't get traffic from YouTube as easily as you can from TikTok, Instagram. It's literally, um, it's common sense. Then you, you post a video of you literally running around Orchard Road naked. You probably can get more views than you do that on YouTube. L- literally, like, because of the algorithm, it's, it's very smart. It's a smart algorithm. No, I'm not saying YouTube is not smart, but YouTube pushes up. Podcast cutouts. Podcast is good to cut out um, and talking hits to actually funnel in the YouTube and to consume more grouper level content, mm. more knowledge, yep. stuff. From there, that's how people, some, you know, Sam Albans, right? Sam Albans, that's how Alex, Alex Becker even close hundreds of deals. Of course, if you have a hook that says, I've made hundred million dollars, of course, you start a YouTube account will be great. La. I mean, there's no real need for you to even do TikTok, IG because you already have credit, you are credible already. So that's my take. So this is it's very interesting in a sense, like, because you see, this is one thing I've also learned recently, like, who cares about you? Who, who gives a shit about Simon Brandon? If you want to do, like, uh, tons of YouTube, no, nobody cares because they don't know, like, what who you are in the first place. Unless you're Sam Owens, unless you're Alex Becker, unless you're Alex Moody, then you can do long form, you can't do short form. Even they see that short form, they got no food. I also want to watch Alex Moody's video to the end because I know he has value. So mm. that's the difference between um a already established and successful creator. It's very easy for them to cut, 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 Spotify, strip audio, Spotify, cut to short form and do all that stuff because it's easier for them to actually do it. But for someone that um is new to content, they should, you should first specify, like, not specify, sorry, you should first specialize. Like what, like what you're doing right now. Interesting. So what advice would you give them for struggling SMMA owners or entrepreneurs trying to make content and create a brand for mm. themselves? Start with talking in videos. Start with talking. You got the best bang for your buck there because um ideally I hate viral videos I hate it you hate what? I hate viral videos okay why so? because okay let, let, let me give you an example okay. let's say if a viral video I get 50k views on that video right and that 50k views are literally all kids commenting yo what 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 the hell like nice one bro the in run bro like this kind of nonsense right like there are no there are 50k unqualified leads mm-hmm. but let's say if I create a video I literally solve all the pain points and problems that you have let's say I'm a uh, I coach like new media buyers, how to make their own course. And I teach you how to how to structure, how to create a position, how to create a system. And let's say only perhaps 2K watches that video. 2K because, come on, who wants to learn about nerdy shit like ad budgeting and demographic targeting? No, nobody wants to hear that shit. Ma. But if then again, you get that 2K people who are interested in, in this shit, they actually see the video, you solve their problem. Mm. Imagine who comes to mind, who comes to their mind when they have a next problem, a fourth problem, a fifth problem, and they need help with solving it. You go. That's why people use talking head to literally leave tons of value. I mean, you interview people like Thomas Gornet. Mm. You see the way he... Yeah, his, YouTube, his entire YouTube is a uh, talking head. Exactly, it's literally like, like charity. He gives charity information. He's not a information provider. He's more so an implementer. Mm. So he teaches all the, all the information for free. Literally, you see his value really, then you choose to work with him. So the positioning is very different when you create content. Why different, I say, is because if you run ads, la, you do, okay, yes, you can run sales letters, but you can do like long-form sales letters, um, on multiple ad campaigns, and do webinars. But then again, webinars, you can really do how many times. But if you create content, literally, but not, not, not just talking about, okay, I got an idea, I make it, but proper content, you think about target audience, think about the pain point, and every single content piece you make, you answer the pain point, you answer the target, you, you solve a problem that the target audience has. Literally, your whole page is a sales letter. All you have to do is just boost posts. Boost posts, um, create ads to optimize for message. Optimize for message, optimize for DMs. Does boosting work? Um, It only works if your videos are, you have a funnel, you have an Instagram funnel. Energy, la. You have a strategy with your Instagram. I mean, if you're using your Instagram to, to post lunches you have with your friends, then perhaps yeah. not. 
Yeah. Right. Interesting. I got. I have tried boosting point before. It works. It works for you. It works. Yeah, for my dance account. Wow, that went that went did, viral. Did it, did it got people to yeah come in? I've I've had a lot of people come in through my dance account. Yeah, I do boost boost once in a while, like exactly. maybe once every few months, just for fun. Mm. Just to see. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Boosting works hard. It's interesting. So I think if you were to let's give some value, because because what what I do right is okay. Yes, though it's marketing, it's a very different form of marketing, like. Like a lot, of, I think you guys, um, media buyers, you understand a lot of like nerd, nerd stuff, like how to toggle the campaign to optimize for which. Uh, I, I'm different in my my sense is more so video side. So how do we make videos that get people to inquire? Like it's very different from traditional media buying. It's a very different skill set as well involved. Mm. So if I were you, let's say, um, running a dance account, correct? Perhaps I'll choose a face on the company. Then literally you teach like the the some can be videos of like dance classes. Do this, that's awesome. I would like you to teach also the growth. So what pain point are you solving? Maybe perhaps you're ungetting young girls or maybe you are very shy and very self-conscious. What will dancing do for you or with your mindset? Literally create videos like this. Maybe also teach how to dance. Teach why men need to do this. Then literally it's an, it's an account with a whole ass sales partner. Yeah. Nice. What are your thoughts on people like Thomas Gornet? Since I'm friends with him, yeah. <laughs> I want to shout out to Thomas. What are your thoughts on his uh, content? Actually, to be, to be frank, I've not really engaged with him, watched too much of his stuff until recently when you, you mentioned. Um, he's quite, he's quite refreshing. He's quite refreshing. You know, a lot of people, I think he, he likes to hit on this one guy on his YouTube. I don't know what the guy. Iman Gadzi, Jaime Iguera. No, as in, Thomas got there to hit on one, one guru, SMA guru, right? like in his YouTube videos. Then he keep talking about, hey, this SMA guru, he's just teaching, he's just selling courses. He never actually do a real agency before. He, he talks a lot about yeah. that kind of stuff. He did expose a few scammers. Yeah, he did, to, he did to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Which is very, like, it's, like, I would say his positioning is very smart. Because let's say if I expose someone, correct? Once I expose someone, I'm not, not hitting him or some marketing. But let's say if I, after I, I hit someone, it's very easy for, for people to trust me because I've literally thrown people out of the window, like, in a sense. <laughs> yeah. Ah, so that's how Thomas does it, huh, Mr. Thomas? And so this is, like, like the, the way I understand content is very different from... Like, it's like media buying, yeah, but it's a lot of like, mm. yeah, if you, you get me. Yeah, it's very different. Me. So like when you want to run a pod, product-based um, sort of social media versus a service-based, it's very different. Product, you need a lot of UGCs. You need a lot of aesthetic shots on how to use a product, you know, day in life, puffs. If products is, is like this. Like let's say Flash Coffee, for example. No sponsorship, uh, no sponsors. But let's say coffee. Wow, I drink this coffee. What is this coffee? What does it include? Blah, blah, blah. That kind of stuff. Then, wow, I, I bring this coffee. Um, it has helped me with productivity. Blah, blah, blah. Then get different influencers to try it. It shows like brand awareness. Blah, blah. People link. It's like something like The Rock. You know, the tequila, you link to The Rock. Or like Under Armour. You know, when you wear Under Armour clothes, you think like you are The Rock. They kind of like a brand association with the product. But for whereas for service, is very different in a sense. Because you're a coach, you're a consultant, it's more so you. So you need to do more talking hits. Instead, you can't do a UGC. Let's say I ask you to run media, let's say you're a media buyer, I ask you to run a UGC media buyer TikTok. Does that make sense? Yeah, I know. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, cool. So that's a, that's a different take. Let's we'll see. Now that we've talked about AI, Thomas Gornet, and interplanetary travels, plus, you know, where you've been uh, from your journey to, from a media buyer to who you are today as a content creator slash service provider, right? What's your advice for the world? Let's say you had five minutes and everybody was watching you. What would you tell them right now? We had 35 minutes and people were like, five minutes? <laughs> if you had five minutes who was watching, what would you tell them right now? So this has got to be very general because the whole world is watching, right? Yeah. So, maybe what I would say is don't let what people think, like people think you should do this. You shouldn't just think surface level. You should really think, have second order, con- second order consequence thinking. Mm. Second order thinking. Mm. In a sense, I think I like this like analogy and terminology a lot because in a sense if you think very one um one level let's say for example um, should I watch this YouTube video you think we're at one level okay I, I watch you really won't it won't really won't help you much in longevity but let's say okay let's let's talk about for example you move into a new house should you get a TV okay, I like this analogy a lot because what's the second order consequence of having a TV let's say I have a TV okay great I enjoy the TV I watch it for 8 hours nice second order consequence of having a TV is because I watch it 8 hours, I developed the habit that I need to watch TV every single day. So the second order consequence is lack of productivity. Then the third level of consequence is because of the lack of productivity, my work suffered. So always think in second order, third order consequences. Like what will happen if you, um, let's say you do this right now uh, and you keep this up, what will happen next? What will happen next? For another example, social media. Consuming, let's say, 8 hours a day. Consume one day, 8 hours, 
what did I do to you? Eight hours. Nothing much. Huh? I just burned eight hours. I got how many hours in my life? X, X amount of hours. Ma. Won't do much. But consuming eight hours a day for four or five times a week. What did I do? Yeah. Interesting. Nice. Second order consequence. Think in second, third, fourth, fifth order consequences. Interesting. Nice. Thanks for being here, man.